So here we are at another site, uh, another sample site, to show you an example of how we do something a little more extensive than what you've seen in the earlier video in Boise. We are now near Sun Valley, Idaho. This is about three hours drive northeast of Boise. And we have a nice creek here called Trail Creek. And this is a nice cobble creek running down through and into the Sun Valley. And I'm going to show you some, some things here that are a little more extensive. Some of the things we do typically for these collections is to get a, a GPS recording and we take a stream temperature and and keep a little more uh, data on the system itself. So what we're going to do is proceed down to this, this creek and I'm going to show you some examples of the kinds of habitats that we have in a stream that's got more flow and more variety than what we've seen in the earlier video. Okay, let's have a look. So here we are at Trail Creek, and uh, this is a, a, a quite a beautiful stream. This is a stream I've never looked in before, so what we're going to be seeing is off the fly and off the cuff, and we'll just see what's in the stream. This is a typical approach for us in terms of going to a new area and seeing what we can find in these systems. Now what I want to point out here is that this has got a lot of variation, a lot of, a lot of diversity in the kinds of microhabitats that are available to us here. We've got a nice relatively small cobble stream, some bigger rocks. We also have a little island in the middle which separates the stream into some slightly different flow dynamics. So a system like this where we have such a, a very short range, maybe 20 to 30 meters of this very long stream, we can have a lot of variation in the kinds of habitats available for the larval aquatic insects that we're looking for for these gut fungi. In the upper parts of that, the, the stream here, of this 20 to 30 meter stretch, we have good flow, rapid rapid flow over these rocks. On the other side, slightly less flow. That, that dynamic can change what you're going to find in even that little part of the stream. At the tip of the island, you're going to find different kinds of insects, potentially, that you'll find on the upper side of that little island. Over here, we have a little, little bit of the stream, which is much slower, sort of meandered off. And again, you'll have different kinds of insects in that little part than you live here in the broader, broader part of the street. If we come down a little further, there's always the potential, and, and a good source of a larva aquatic insects is just, the, just the, the roots and snags and debris that you'll find along different stretches of the stream. So when you come to a system, you have to adapt to every part of the system that's available to you and you just have to get to know your insects well and when you do that and you get to know your stream well you're going to have a lot of taxa that are available to you. So we're going to put that to the test here to now and see what we can find in these different sections of the stream. Here we are at this upper stretch of, of Trail Creek, the upper 20 to 30 meter stretch we're going to work on today and again uh, we're going to look at the diversity of the hosts in this much different system than we were in in, in Boise. If you recall, I used a smaller aquatic net available from the pet store in Boise. But I'm going to use a larger D net. This is called a D aquatic sampling net, D shaped net. Uh, fairly small diameter of mesh and a fairly wide girth. So this can collect a lot of insects at one time. What we're going to do here is we're going to go into the stream, different parts of the stream, and do some kick sampling. Kick sampling is simply kicking the ground, the, the substrate beneath the surface to dislodge the insects that are clinging to some of this rock, leaf litter, other sorts of debris that are in the stream. I'm going to start in the smaller cobbles and work down through this sort of intermediate flow and, I'll, and then I'll bring that sample to the pan and we'll have a look at it.
initially is just have a look at what you have. Here we have two stone flies. These look like lutrids, a very good host of, of uh, gut fungi. When you see stone flies in a sample with, uh, with this kind of maturity, with these wing pads that are maturing, uh, this is a good sign. It's, it's a sign that the stream is healthy. There's a lot of diversity here. Uh, we've got mayflies. We've got also a terrestrial stink bug, which is not so, so relevant. But this is a really good sample for a first kick at a site we've never been this to. This kick that I've just taken is rather minimal. I may want to spend a couple minutes, three to four minutes, kicking 10 meters of a stream, especially if I'm not finding that there's a lot of diversity. They might be scattered along a stream, not so dense as what you were seeing here. Once you have your sample, and you've, and you've got a pan full of insects, what you can do is take your pooter and you can, you can remove the insects of interest. Once you've removed them to the, to the jar, and I'm just using a sterile urine container, it can be any sort of jar that's, uh, that's clean. Then you can cap it, put it on ice, and take well, it back. You can always take an extra kick sample with you and, and keep this in a refrigerator alive until you're, you're satisfied that you've sampled uh, appropriately for any Another given Another technique that one can use in a system like this is to just pick up some vegetation, some of, the, some of the substrate. Some of these insects will be more clingy than some of the ones we've just collected. One of the things you can do is pick up rocks. Rocks will have these clinging kinds of hosts on them. For example, you can have caddis, caddis worms, caddis fly larvae, will often form in tubes, hollow tubes, made of different kinds of material. It could be grass and vegetation. It can be small stones and pebbles. You can collect a number of things like this that you will not find as productively by simply kick sampling. These things are very difficult to dislodge. It takes a lot of kicking to dislodge some of them. Here we have a small snag. These are very common in any system. And we've got bigger ones downstream. But as an example, one can kick through this or simply pick up some of this material. You can just have a quick check to see if there's some something here that you might have missed in the other approaches you had in your collecting. Once it's in your pan, it's the same method. It's a visual check. I often like to put my pan on the side of the stream or on something more stable. Once you have it stabilized, I like to think there's the five minute rule. If you put your pan down and then go for another sample, usually these insects will start moving in that time frame if there's not much disturbance. So for me, typically what I will do to set the pan down, especially if I don't see anything immediately, I will grab my sample here, head off to the next habitat. A lot of times I have two pans with me and I'll grab another, another sample and then put that aside and look at this one that's been maintained and it's been more still and give, them a, give the host a chance to start to crawl around. It's just a visual uh, collection. These hosts can be as large as some of the ones you've seen here, you know, 10, 12, 15 millimeters. Some of the smaller things that we collect in, some, in these streams are much smaller. In those cases, you're going to need something which, with a much, much finer mesh, or you're going to want a sieve with an even finer mesh. Nothing has to be as fancy as what you see here, however. You could use a kitchen strainer, or something improvised in the system that is available. There's one other sort of habitat that I'm going to test here and show you one other kind of insect that I haven't shown you yet, and that is black flies. Black flies really prefer, and this is a general statement, they like to live in a very highly oxygenated part of the stream. In many cases, those will be the areas where the water is very rapidly flowing over the rocks. I'm going to go up into some of these areas and just test to see if we see some black flies there in some of the areas that I suspect where we will find them. Another kind of habitat and uh, situation where you will find black flies is like what you'll see over there in the side stream. You'll see that there are some 
some pieces of vegetation, some trees that are down. They'll often be dangling on grass blades, other sorts of vegetation that are in the current and being suspended there. at finding black flies in the fast flow. However, I did find a few black flies on this twig. And if you take a close-up of this, you can see that this twig is actually covered with these black fly larvae. The numbers are so great here that I would just as easily place this entire stick in a bag.